Hey everyone, Sam here. And in this video, I'm excited to share with you some of the new features we've been developing for the Lottie Interactivity Library. This new feature that we're calling Interaction Chaining allows you to play a whole or part of a Lottie animation depending on how the user interacts with it. Whether that be clicking, hovering, holding onto the animation, but it can also be things like when the segment has finished playing or has looped a certain amount of times. Lottie Interactivity now allows you to create simple or complex interactive scenarios with your Lottie animations. Let's check some of those out. So let's find out what you can get up to with interaction chaining with the Lottie Interactivity Library. Here we've got a little pigeon running along and if I click on it, unfortunately it blows up. So what's going on here is that this animation has three different segments to it. The bird running, the explosion, and the feathers falling. And inside of After Effects, I've given these three segments named markers. And so now I want to show you how easy it was to configure with Lottie Interactivity. You might recognize this sort of setup if you've already used Lottie Interactivity. However, we've got a new mode and we can use interaction chaining by declaring a chain mode. And then the same as before, a Lottie player element ID. And then we can get into the actions. So with interaction chaining, the important parts to declare are a state and transition. So the state is how the animation um, will perform without user interaction. So here, as you can see, I've set it to loop. And this means the bird, um, the bird running segment is just going to loop over and it's going to transition on click. And for frames, we're just going to declare bird. So bird is the name of the named markers I've set up, but you can also set frame numbers if you want to. So here, if I click, obviously it's going to explode and the feather is going to fall. That's because I've set the transition to click. And then in the second action, I've set it to auto play. So it's going to auto play the explosion transition when the explosion has finished and go to the feathers. So here you can sort of see um, a bit of repetition. So we've got state transition and frames, state transition frames. And then for the last link, we've got state autoplay transition on complete frames feathers and reset true. So this means that once the feathers are finished playing with reset true is going to set to the first link of the actions object. So back to the pigeon running. Let's check out a few more examples. So what's possible now with lots of interactivity? is the ability to set up um, clicking a certain amount of times on the animation and then having a transition to the next animation. So here, if I click five times, we're gonna get the confetti popping up. And there also exists something called force flag, which can then play the animation as soon as it's clicked on. So let me just show you how it was set up. So we've got a state which is click, force flag to true, and then the frames is just the named marker star. We're also going to set the transition to click. However, if you add a count, this means that you've got to click five times before it goes to the next link in the interaction chain. This is also new. You can set a path. And so this is actually a URL to a Lottie animation and it's going to dynamically load it as soon as you click five times. So the confetti is actually getting dynamically loaded as soon as you click five times. And this means that you can choose from the whole collection of Lottie animations from Lottie files and add them into your interaction scenarios. So you can also do the same thing with hovering. You can add a count and that's going to transit after you've hovered over the animation the defined amount of times. So here, if I hover over it five times or five, the confetti is going to pop up. 
And so if you just go a bit slow, you can get the full animation. But because of the force flag, it's going to play as soon as I hover over it. There we go. So if I disabled force flag, it would just mean that the animation wouldn't restart as soon as you hover over it. Let's check out a new type of transition, which is the repeat transition. So we can now define how many times we want an animation to loop before going to the next transition. So here we've got the morphing shapes playing twice before going over to the twirl of the shapes. And so it's pretty simple to set up, just define a repeat transition and set repeat to the number of times you want to repeat the segment. And then it will then go to the next action in the interaction chain. And as you can see here, I've defined a path. So the twirl, the shapes that are twirling are actually dynamically loaded uh, when needed. And as you can see here, I've defined an array of frames. So I want the twirling shapes to play from frame zero to 110. And then on complete, I want it to go back to the beginning. So that's what transition on complete and reset true means. Another new interaction type is the hold interaction. And if you use this as a transition, you can hold on to an animation and transit when you've hold on long enough. So here, if I hold on to it, it's going to play. And if I remove the cursor, it's going to play in reverse. So this works quite well with this tap and hold animation. So if you tap and then remove, it's just going to play backwards. But if I hold on to it long enough, it's going to go to the next animation, the check mark. So there we go. And there we go. So it was pretty simple to set up. You just set up the hold transition and the amount of frames you want the user to hold on for. So as soon as you hold on and the animation hits frame 170, it's going to go to the next action in the action chain and load up the tick animation in this case. You can also define the pause hold as a transition. And this is the same as hold, except that when you release, the animation is just going to get paused. So one of the previous interactions, which has been integrated into animation chaining, is syncing the animation to the horizontal movement of the cursor. And in this case, we can slide to unlock an iPhone and then autoplay an animation. So to set up the seeking transition, you have to define a position to where we want to listen on the animation. So here, zero to one means we're gonna listen from the start to the end of the container of the animation. And well, we're gonna to have to go from frame zero to 30 on our animation. So I've set up this animation so that frame zero, this, the unlock bar is at the left. And then frame 30 is all the way over to the right. And if I do that, it's going to unlock the iPhone. So when you hit frame 30, it's gonna to go to the next action and autoplay the defined animation from frame 30 to frame 160, which is just the Lottie logo. So with that quick setup, it means that you can have this sort of interaction type, which is really quite interesting um, to set up with Lottie animations. One more option you have to define inside of Lottie interactivity is a jump to property. And what's gonna happen is that when we go to the end of the links, it's going to jump to jump to the first action in the interaction chain. And so as it's an array, it starts from zero, one, two, and three. And so at the end, it's gonna to jump to the first one, which means the triangle. So we go from broccoli, so that's the square. We go from broccoli, to the triangle, skipping the circle. And that's what jump to does. 
I hope this video got you excited to try out interaction chaining on the Lottie Interactivity Library. You can find out more information about all the different interaction types over at lottiefiles.com slash interactivity. And if you do use interaction chaining, be sure to show us on our social media accounts at Lottie Files. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.